ever thought about who creates the amazing gardens at the Bellagio Hotel or Rockefeller Center? You know, it's so funny that you, th that you mentioned this because I was at Rockefeller Center over Christmas just admiring like the beauty and that, that crazy tree and you know, it, it's and never, thought really, of that? I know, I've never really thought of that before. Well, I'll tell you who. So Shelby Gleba, our guest right now, thank you so much, thank is the director of marketing for Lifescapes International, and they create this magic. That is, it so is we're magical. gonna hear all about what goes on behind the scenes and where do these crazy, brilliant, giant ideas come from? Well, we have a very talented team of designers. We've actually been in business 61 years. Wow. We didn't all start with those type of projects, and we did a lot of residential. We did a lot of lakefront, um, you know, and out Palm Springs in the desert. Mm -hmm. And they used to joke that you could portage across all of our lakes, you know, <laughs> straight across the county. <laughs> and it really all changed in the 80s when we we did the Mirage in Las Vegas, which at that time nobody had seen yeah. a resort mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all are used to what's there now, but if you think back to 1986, and right. that was really the anomaly. So that was our first real project that change the trajectory of our company. I mean, That's to really these amazing. massive resorts and... Oh yeah, I remember actually because um, I grew up in Utah and we would always go through Vegas to go to California once a year for our you know Disneyland trip or whatever. And I actually remember going through Vegas and all of a sudden there's this like humongous place out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just kind of rose out of the it desert. It just rose right? out of the desert and then like the next year there was this giant pyramid and then the next year there was you know it was yeah. really really amazing to be part of I feel like I was like part of that culture as it grew into what it is today so that's really amazing that you guys were yeah. you know the mirage people that's so there's the a level of creativity but mm -hmm. seriously this goes beyond that I mean let's talk about some of your favorite projects Oh, where do you, where do you stop, right? Um, <laughs> well, let's just start. <laughs> I know. Well, one of my favorites is one of our most current projects, which is Encore Boston Harbor, which is where we oh, really yeah. took Vegas outside of, mm -hmm. you know, and it's in Everett, Massachusetts, which is on the old Mystic River. So that was a huge undertaking. They had to, you know, go through the site remediation mm -hmm. that had been a polluted river for 200 years. Mm -hmm. wow. That city had been a, a very blue collar working community. And they really revitalized that with a five star resort. It is spectacular. Wow. So now, you know, what means a lot to us is not just that we create these beautiful spaces, but that you know, we'll, we'll follow them on social media and I'll see these couples getting engaged under the gazebo mm -hmm. and the event lawn that we designed. And so, for that, you know, that's really what means a lot to us is yeah. to see the end user, you know, mm -hmm. in that space and making memories. Our CEO has always, he's always said, um, he was following behind a couple one time at the Bellagio in the conservatory. And the husband looked at the wife and he's like, gee, Gertrude, aren't you glad we're here? And to him, he was like, that is what means the most to me is I'm mm -hmm. hearing the, the person who's at my my project and they're really enjoying it so I really love what you said there because you know there are technicians right who they can put something really amazing together but the true yeah. craftsmen mm -hmm. are the ones who are able to connect the human experience with a beautiful you right know, landscape or yeah. you know space and so I think that's really amazing and that's probably one of the reasons that it resonates so well with us as we go into some of your spaces. And we really do try to understand mm -hmm. who's going to be there, you know, what their likes, their interests are mm -hmm. and if it's a retail project. Like we did Pacific City in Huntington mm -hmm. Beach, so mm -hmm. a local project. I love that. It's a great project and when you enter off PCH there's a beautiful thermary wood decked um, uh, stacked area you can sit you know people climb on it there's the fire pits behind it so we really wanted to know what are people going to be doing here how are they going to use the space obviously we all know there's surf competitions there's right. the parade and so you know they we knew there was going to be events and opportunities that people would want to view the ocean you know so that really became the focal point for us mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. what, what essentially will be the the mm -hmm. reason the that they yeah, yeah the use of the project mm -hmm. and did you guys do the residential side of that as well we did or? not no okay. we did that we did the retail side but we did collaborate so that the planting materials sort of gradually change from the residential to the retail right. area to, to mm -hmm. make it a more cohesive design. Well, because that, that's what I was going to say, that yeah. they're totally connected, which means yeah. that somebody took Pacific City into consideration right. because mm -hmm. it was such a powerful venue, and then they made sure to link it and make it feel relatable. Right. So you're inspiring the other designers as well, um, the developers and the real estate developers. So that's, that's a kind of big 
that's even bigger is because you know, and often we do have to collaborate. You mm -hmm. know, there are other mm -hmm. in Boston. We did collaborate with um, a small company that's local called Pam Shadley Associates, and they're great because they really were familiar with that area mm -hmm. and the cold weather climate and that that riverfront. Mm -hmm. So they were able to help create sort of that natural landscaping along the riverfront mm -hmm. that connected the more ornate, you know, parterre gardens that you see that are very reminiscent of when with yeah. that sort of landscaped area and the bike trails and everything so mm -hmm. she was very instrumental in helping us with that so we always try to collaborate especially with locals you know because yeah. they're going to understand that climate mm -hmm. well and then they're going to want it too right Correct. isn't there that yes. pride of ownership so how many projects do you handle at a time oh wow we probably have 30 to 40 active projects in design right now yeah i mean if you, even if you just look at what we've done in the last 30 years in Vegas, there was over 45 projects just in Las Vegas. Oh my gosh. We had 15 on the Strip, the Strip Median, you know, 30 other regional casinos, and we're doing many other regional casinos, other hotels, hospitality. We do a lot of work in Asia. We have a lot of China projects going right now. Interesting. Yeah, so, so for us it's kind of, you know, there's a lot and there's a lot of travel for us, which mm -hmm. is really neat and very interesting. So what, what, is one of, what are some trends that you're seeing currently? that you could maybe some insider tips that you could give us and what we might be able to see. Things that we could use in our own gardens. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, I wish. Yes, I wish I had fun. that inside knowledge. Yes. Um, you know, what we're seeing in the market as far as trends is retail is everybody's kind of talking about how retail is starting to die. Yes. Mm -hmm. Every day you hear a new company is going bankrupt. Yes. So what retail developers are trying to do is is change the reason you go out to shop. Mm -hmm. You know, become lifestyle centers. Mm -hmm. You go out because you socialize with your friends. That's mm -hmm. right. You're gonna go out and you're gonna sit in these sort of outdoor living spaces where we've we've created this comfortable environment for you and you, you can hang out, you can have a drink, you can you know get some appetizers, you can sit around fire pits. Mm -hmm. There's events, a lot of we're seeing a lot of trends with developers programming events. Mm. So whether it's spin class in the park or mm -hmm. um, concerts in the park, we see yoga and beer has become sort of a, a <laughs> recent thing. Beer? Is that like yoga detox, retox? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Get yoga the toxins out while you're taking yeah. them in. Exactly. What, so. what about goat yoga and beer? I've never oh. seen that. <laughs> Not with beer, but I've seen goat yoga. Yeah, that's, oh, that's funny. That's so funny. they try to purpose those spaces in other ways. Uh -huh. So that's becoming, you know, and we are planning for Uber is a big trend, so we have to plan for you know the Uber vehicles coming into the properties mm, and interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, new things to account for yes. things that didn't exist before. What about some design features? What are, what are some like some of the more like designy tips and trends? Well, you know, it really it depends on the project. Right. Like whether we in California we do a lot of sustainable, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you'll see a lot of rot resistant mm -hmm. and um, like a, like we're oceanfront. We have a lot of rot resistant materials. Mm -hmm. We also try to use a lot of plant material that's it's not going to require a lot of irrigation and right. try to make it look lush. Uh, okay. So that's kind of you know, and then East Coast now we're we're learning a lot more about being in Boston recently, mm -hmm. learning a lot more about, about plant material that can survive harsh climates, mm -hmm. winter times, a lot of evergreens, you know, deciduous mm -hmm. trees. So, so designing, we're learning a lot more about plant material that can sustain. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. kind of, that's, and that I think will continue to, you know, in the world of landscape architecture. Yeah. It's always been something very important. That's really interesting. Do you take the local flavor of the community, like you mentioned, you're doing a lot in Asia, right? So yes. do you have a crew that goes out and says, you know, what is being done out here and we're going to do something similar? Or do you say, no, we have our vision, we're going to take this and we're going to do something totally different here in Asia? You know, it really depends on the developer because we meet with them initially and kind of have a vision uh -huh. meeting. And we take a lot of it. Is, a lot of it is really kind of what they've already seen. They've been on the project longer than mm -hmm. we have. Very often, the architect has already been on the project. Mm -hmm. So we come in and we like to hear what their what their ultimate goal is. Right. And then we like to craft it. You know, give them ideas or, or thoughts um, about what we could see for that project. So, you know, it's in Asia. It's funny because we do go out and we look around. They don't want Asian style. They tend to want right. contemporary or French or, or very European gardens, very formal gardens. Mm -hmm. So what we're designing over there might be very different than what we're designing in New York City. And mm -hmm. they, they do like very formal. And a lot of what we've done is very, very Romanesque and, and French and yeah. Yeah, they're 
they're asking, well, very much like in New York, right, where you might be doing the Asian gardens, yes. which are very popular in mm -hmm. residences also. Yes. But then everybody wants what they don't have. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? <laughs> that is yes. the truth. And a, a really a big trend that, you know, contemporary. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are going very contemporary. Mm -hmm. we're, we're running out of land, especially in certain mm -hmm. urban areas. Yeah. So urban development is just rising. Mm -hmm. So we have done a lot of roof decks and a lot of you know pools on podium and, mm -hmm. and creating kind of spill out areas mm -hmm. from maybe a, a rec room or a spa that sort of spills out into a deck. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so now you're getting outdoor spaces, pool tables and foosball tables and, and all that's just sort of raised up off the ground so that you still get that experience with less land. That's, oh, that's so really interesting. Yeah. interesting. Oh. Or even I know oftentimes going underground mm. and because the rents would be cheaper yeah. underground mm -hmm. so they're creating the atriums and the gardens yeah. in a different venue. So what's the future for? You know, a long time ago um, our founder and CEO was asked what his favorite project is. And he said, the next one. Perfect. So for us, it's always, you know, we don't know what's next. Um, and we're always excited about what's next. And we're always kind of looking to what's happening. Um, so I don't know what's next. But okay. I, it's definitely something we, we're always going to be on the cutting edge of. We consider ourselves sort of, you know, uh, cutting edge designers that, that always look for that next great thing. Mm -hmm. We've had clients say to us, well, where's all, you know, we'd like our volcano. <laughs> so we're always looking for the next volcano. You know. And do you still do residential? We do multifamily communities. Mm -hmm. Occasionally we'll do a private residential, usually for some of the developers we work with, but okay. we, don't, we don't do a lot of uh, private Not residential. Yeah. Yeah. But for our viewers who want more information and certainly want to see more of the images than we've been able to show them in this short time, where do they find you? We are at lifescapesintl.com. Perfect. Shelby, thank you so much thank for, for being me. with us. We appreciate thank it. Thank you so much, fun. Thank you. And we'll be back.